Hi all, I have another intriguing game by Leela ID 507 against Stockfish 7. This is by David Grosvenor. So Leela was playing on a, on a uh, GTX 1060 graphics card, Stockfish 7 on a 2.8 gigahertz 4 CPU setup. It's a uh, one minute for 40 move time control, every 40 moves an extra minute. So let's see what happened in this fascinating game. Uh, E4, E5, we have actually the Scotch game in this particular uh, game. So E takes, Knight takes D4, Knight F6. Lila takes on C6 and plays Bishop D3. Against D5, she plays actually just Knight C3. I believe this is a lot stronger what, than what I've been playing <laughs> in this position. I've been tempted sometimes to play E5, but I think black has uh, very good play after E5. Uh, so we have Knight C3, which is very nice actually, because if, if D takes, then the structural damage is evident. And white actually can end up getting a nice advantage, even if the queens come off here. This is a nice small edge for white. Look at the structure, for example. So knight c3, an interesting move. Bishop d6, white castles, black castles, h3, rook e8, rook e1, bishop e5. So putting pressure on e4 indirectly. But Lila just pins that knight. It's a bit dangerous for black to take here. For example, this didn't happen. Just as an example, there is bishop takes here and bishop takes e4. And this is a loose rook, as we see from this variation. Bishop takes h7, hitting the rook. So white could end up better there, for example. So this is this is a little bit dangerous for black, this position. So it should be okay. Small edge for white. So uh, bishop g5. We have bishop b7. Queen f3. Rook b8. Rook a d1. So white's pieces seem harmonious and centralized. Quite nice. Queen d6. Bishop d2. a6. And then we have b4. So rook e6. So b4 tries to sort of clamp down against a5 and c5. a3. If black had taken, then I expect knight takes d5 looks pretty strong and simple. Hitting the queen. Double attack, bishop and knight. So uh, that's left. So rook e6, a3. Rook b e8. Now this game gets a bit crazy. It goes off the rails here. Leader actually plays queen f5 g6 queen g5 and here uh there's some forcing moves available which does a horrible thing to Leela, uh starting with d4 so knight e2 there's a horrible forcing move sequence which appears to just win the game basically uh outright in in a way which is bishop h2 check and now rookie five and the queen the poor queen is is trapped with rook e5, with the check, the naughty check, there's no queen g3 now. The queen, um, yeah, the, although, <laughs> yeah, there's no queen g3. Uh, so we have queen h4, rook h5, the queen's been checkmated. Now, is that the end of the story or the beginning of the story here? What does Leela play in this position? It starts to get a bit mysterious, more than a bit mysterious. <laughs> Okay, Lina actually takes on f6, so she grabs actually two pieces, and they're actually two of black's better pieces. If you look at this bishop, it's kind of hemmed in. This rook is a little bit offside at the moment. Black plays c5 here. Taking on f2, you might ask. Knight g3, and then uh, rook f1. Well, white's actually threatening to trap black's queen with rook f1. So if the queen escapes, rook f1, uh, that will be pinning the knight. But white can actually just take on h5 here, of course, and cause even more structural damage to black. Now, this position is kind of interesting for white. It's at least equal. I think white's building up uh, some pressure in this position, in fact. So even though it might be technically equal, I think the, the prospects are for, for white here, actually. Because if you look at how fragmented Black's pawn structure is. So that's all really pretty interesting. And a little bit mysterious, maybe, you could consider. So um, let's go back. So queen f6, king takes. We have c5. So not queen takes f2. 
And now knight g3. Now I've here I've actually checked this position against three different versions of Stockfish. So Stockfish 7, which is the opponent in this game, likes to play rook h4. I'm not sure entirely the reason. It's okay, it's keeping the pin on h3, it's keeping a certain amount of tactical pressure on white. And Stockfish 8 is swaying between rook h4 and rook e5, getting the rook back to the center. Now Stockfish 9 on a reasonable depth is actually swaying more clearly to rook g e5, getting the rook into safety. And I believe this is the way that it should have gone technically with technically best play to get the rook back into the center. So this is, I don't know if this is out of horizon for Stockfish 7. It seems to be a tempting move. If you want to check with your own Stockfishes here, a very tempting move to play rook h4. As I mentioned, I think sometimes tactics are in context. Um, and sometimes there's a small window of that context with um, Stockfish 7 compared to Stockfish 9, for example. So the longer term downside of this rook, it's, it does seem misplaced uh, in an intuitive sense. But how easy is that to prove here? Well, white takes on c5, which is a very positive thing to do, it seems here. Bishop c6, which does leave the a6 pawn as well for bait. Uh, rook b1 first, though. Queen e5, and now bishop takes a6. Rook a8, and the bishop just retreats. Rook takes a3. Now here, uh, it seems as though, what's the big deal about the rook on h4? But it starts to be uh, become more apparent that there's trouble on the horizon here, so to speak, after rook f1. This implies actually that, for example, f4, uh, and then there'll be dangerous checks like with f5 and f6 to come. So this is starting to be spelled out now. f4, if you look at white's pieces, the rooks are both active. Queen e8 was played. At this point, it's starting to look a bit dodgy for black now with that rook on h4. It's becoming apparent. On queen takes c5, for example, f5 already has a mega threat of rook b8 check and f6. Just to put that on the board as a token move, you can see that check and f6 is checkmate here. So already it's slightly dangerous here. Uh, on h6, e5, and this is very nice for white. Look at that rook on h4 and look at white's rooks. This position is starting to be at least even uh, for white. So it's starting to be dangerous, but this is, I believe, a further little slip up instead of queen takes c5. And in fact, white seems to be getting into the driving seat here after f5, remarkably. So it was only a queen sacrifice for two pieces. But black seems to have been lured into having a rook offside, which is now it's becoming clearer, it's a little bit more vulnerable than before because there's now a threat of bishop g5 as well here to trap that rook. So sometimes, I think I mentioned like pins especially or, or you know, any any piece issues in general have a certain horizon. That sometimes there's a short term downside or a longer term, much longer term downside. But here it's starting to be really spelled out that the rook is in trouble now, is in real trouble. Uh, we have queen d8 being played. So if rook a8, we can see clearly bishop g5 now, and that rook's in big, big trouble. So queen d8 stops bishop g5. <coughs> e5, but now it seems there's another issue as well as the rook, which is these pawns and smashing through to black's king or creating a pass pawn in the center. Rook a8, rook h, rook b e1. <coughs> this is a very desperate move, rook g4 now, to try and solve the problems. Uh, it's it's clever tactically because because uh, of taking queen h4 check, picking up the knight. But before we look at that for a moment, if we look at this position, how does white actually progress, say, with a token move? e6 takes, takes, bishop d7 say the rook going back, this position is actually kind of nasty after bishop f4 because of bishop e5 check. In fact, the bishop pair with the two rooks 
is providing a very dangerous position. Black might have to set the exchange here to fend off an attack, after which it's very big advantage for white, for example, like that. It's it's nasty for black in this position. Totally, it's really nasty. So this is born out of a bit of desperation now, seeing some of the dangers. This rook g4, it seems. Uh, another idea, queen d5 here, threatening mate, you might ask. This position, uh, there's still bishop g5, and if, say like this, I'm just take on h4. So, yeah, rook g4 tries to save the rook, at least get the exchange. But, yeah, white's compensation is, is quite large here now, after winning that exchange. Uh, we have bishop e4, which parries the mate threat, queen takes g2 mate. But also, it's simplifying the position by force, skewing the bishop and rook. Uh, so leaving the queen a bit lonelier than before now. We can see the queen getting a, a little bit lonelier. So d3 here was played bishop e1, queen g5, bishop h4. The white pieces are kicking that queen back here, it seems, uh, with a vengeance. c takes d3, and it's it's starting to be very, very nice. Threatening mate again, bishop f2, parrying that. Rook b1. Threatening the very nasty rook b8. That's parried. e6 though, and we've got a passed pawn now. In the centre, white has adequate compensation, more than adequate here now. After e7, rook e8, that pawn supported. Rook 1 to e3, threatening rook g3, pinning the queen. That's parried. Rook g3 anyway. We have uh, bishop d4, threatening the very nasty rook g7 now. Uh, now h5, so king h2 was played. Queen f7, and this uh, is a cash out move now, just cashing out rook g7 to a winning endgame. Yeah, it's <laughs> what, what what is uh, actually black doing here? Uh, it's it's a very very dangerous position in any case. Uh, I I think there are threats like rook e5. If black didn't do anything like queen f7, rook e5 for rook takes h5 is, is checkmate, for example. So a very, very difficult situation. So stop for 7 felt it was best to do that. But this is just a lost endgame here. This position is a lost endgame now. So we hear, we see here just it's it's technique. Uh, actually, the game ended here, and it was adjudicated as a win for white. It's just that they say check saves the pawn and g4 is a massive advantage for white. So that was kind of intriguing. Stockfish's earlier version gets its rook kind of trapped in a long term sense, I would say, which Stockfish 9, Stockfish 9 knows a little bit better and gets the rook out of any potential trouble. So there's a much bigger window of the horizon view. But poor Stockfish 7. But it does make for a little bit of entertainment to see Stockfish 7. Uh, it's just like two pieces for the Queen, but a slightly misplaced Rook. But then it it gets to be like a Rook in real trouble. And then it gets to be like big pawns in the centre crashing through. So I thought that was quite amusing <laughs> myself. I hope you do as well. So interesting game there, I think. Comments, questions, like, shares, appreciated. Thanks so much.